students uh, welcome to experimental techniques and material characterizations uh, lecture number one uh, I'm dr. Pervez Ahmed uh, this is the first part of the lecture about scanning electron uh, microscopy so here uh, uh, mostly we will deal with the uh, introductions of uh, scanning electron uh, microscope uh, so let's start uh, today's lecture uh, from the introduction of scanning electron microscope so we will start our discussions from the questions uh, that uh, what is uh, SCM that is uh, what is scanning electron uh, microscope so here we have uh, uh, a brief introductions of the scanning electron microscope uh, the picture of the uh, the scanning electron microscope you can see it here uh, so what is it uh, the scanning electron microscope is a microscope uh, that uses electron uh, rather than uh, light to form an image. So there are many advantages to use uh, the SEM instead of an optical uh, microscope. So uh, the same is designed for direct studying of the surface of the solid object. Uh, but be remember, unlike the optical microscope, uh, I mean uh, this is a bit expensive. And the cost um, of uh, an SEM is lying in the range of uh, 0 0.8 to 2.4 uh, million US uh, dollar. So uh, advantage of using a SEM or optical microscope air, uh, first we will deal with the uh, magnifications uh, uh, depth of field resolution. So here is a comparison uh, between the optical microscope and scanning electron microscope. So here if you compare the magnification, so in uh, magnifications, uh, here you can see that an optical microscope, uh, we can have an image uh, and, a, and a magnification from 4x to 100x. So unlike that, if you are using uh, SEM, so in SEM, uh, we can take image or a micro drop uh, in the magnification range of uh, 10x to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 30k uh, x uh, so the, that is that is the difference between the uh, SEM and optical microscope so if we deal in depth of field uh, resolution so again here you can see uh, the depth of field that how how far and uh, uh, SEM can go and the minimum uh, uh, I mean uh, the, the, the thickness or the, the smallest thickness where optical microscope or SEM can go so in case of article microscope we can have uh, the minimum range that is it can goes up to 0 0.2 uh, uh, millimeters so unlike that if we take a uh, scanning electron microscope so scanning electron microscope can take the image I mean it can resolve the object uh, in a lens scale that is from 1 to 10 uh, nanometers uh, so this, this is the key difference uh, I mean a comparison between the optical microscope and scanning electron microscope uh, so uh, an SEM uh, has a large uh, depth of field uh, which allow a large amount of the sample to be in focus uh, at one time and produces an image that is good representations of the three dimension sample uh, the SEM also produces image of high resolutions which mean that closely features uh, can be examined at a high uh, magnifications so the combinations of higher magnifications, uh, larger depth of field uh, which you ha have observed and the greater resolutions uh, and uh, compositional and crystallographic informations uh, make the SEM one of the most heavily used instrument and in research areas in industries especially in semiconductor industries. So uh, if we utilize uh, I mean uh, the formula KO formula uh, which you can see it here uh, for the depth of uh, the depth penetrations uh, that is R according to this formula is equal to 0 0.0276 AE raised to the power 1.67 divided by Z raised to the power 0 0.89 and rho. Uh, so according to this formula, uh, I mean R stand for uh, Depth penetrations A for the atomic weight that is gram per mole, uh, E uh, stand for beam energy that is uh, kilowatt, uh, Z atomic numbers, and Rho stand for density. 
so if you apply, uh, if you utilize this formula, so according to this formula, if we utilize an energy uh, beam that is equal to 0 0.5 kV, uh, so it can generate a 35 ampere current and the sample and if the sample is, uh, let's suppose uh, we say that, if this, uh, this, uh, the sample is iron, uh, so this much of energy can produce this much of the current and the sample. If we increase the, the beam energy that is up to 1 kV, so it can generate, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it can uh, goes up to a different ratio of uh, 0 0.1 micrometer and it can has a current that is equal to 100, uh, 100 ampere. Uh, again, if we further proceed to uh, 5 uh, kV, uh, so that can goes up to a penetration, depth penetration of 0 0.16 micrometers and with 15 kV, uh, we can reach up to uh, 0.99 uh, micrometer and with 30 kV, uh, we can reach uh, with the depth penetrations and iron uh, that is equal to 3.1 uh, uh, micrometers. So scanning electron microscope is a uh, totally different image concept uh, than that of the optical microscope uh, because in this kind of microscope instead of using the full feed image a point to point measurement strategy is used along with that high energy electron beam is used to excite the specimen and the signal are collected and analyzed so that an image can be constructed. Uh, the signal carry uh, topological, chemical, and uh, crystallographic information respectively of the sample surface. Uh, so here you can see that uh, uh, what actually we mean to say, uh, I mean, and, and in a sample words, if someone asks uh, what is a SAM, uh, what is an SAM and uh, uh, how we can define a SAM, so in the simplest term, uh, an SEM is really nothing more than a television. So you can see it here for yourself. Uh, we use uh, a filament uh, to get electrons, uh, magnet uh, to move them around, and a detectors uh, act like a camera uh, to produce uh, an image. So the whole concept of the SEM, that is scanning electron microscope, uh, it's just like uh, that of a TV screen and uh, with a camera and the whole uh, uh, the whole situation you can see the whole definition you can see uh, for uh, yourself and this uh, photograph. So main applications, what are the main application of SAM? I mean if we have SAM, uh, we want to use that. So what sort of the application what uh, one can expect uh, by utilizing uh, SEM. So the first, uh, I mean, the application of the SEM is uh, while we are using air uh, is about the topography. So what is me? Uh, what did mean by topography? Topography mean that if we use uh, uh, SEM, so it can give information about uh, the surface feature of an object and its uh, te textures. Uh, what mean by texture? Texture means that uh, with the help uh, of the SEM, uh, I mean, if we have a sample and we want to characterize that sample uh, by mean of uh, 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 topo uh, topography, uh, so we can get uh, the information about the hardness of the surface uh, of, a, uh, of a sample. Along with that, we can get information about uh, the reflectivity and uh, so on. Uh, so uh, we can also get information about the morphology of a sample. Uh, that means that if you utilize SEM, so with the help of SEM, we can get information about the shape and size of the particles uh, making up the object. So along with that, uh, we can also get the information. I mean, uh, while you're doing the morphological analysis uh, with the SEM, uh, so with that, uh, uh, you not only get about, uh, not only get the information about the shape and size of the particle, but uh, you can also get the information about the strength uh, of, uh, of your sample uh, defect in the uh, IC and chip, etc. I mean, these are the further informations uh, you can get uh, when you are utilizing the feature in SEM for uh, the morphological analysis of your uh, sample.
uh, you can also get information about the composition of the sample that is uh, uh, when you have uh, analyzed uh, when, when you have your sample and you want to analyze that for the compositions uh, so by utilizing the SEM you can get the element and the compound uh, that the object is composed of and the relative amount of them uh, can be found uh, can be found by uh, the SEM that is uh, with the help of the SEM you can found that uh, what kind of the element are a compound uh, that's being consisted of uh, your sample I mean you can easily find that what is the composition of your sample uh, what are the element or the compound uh, that are present or that are making your uh, your material or, or your sample and additions uh, uh, with the SEM you can find uh, the informations I mean using the composition and analysis you can find the information about the melting point uh, reactivity hardness etc uh, as well uh, crystallographic information I mean uh, by utilizing the SEM uh, uh, you can also get the crystallographic information about your sample uh, what it mean by the crystallographic information the crystallographic information uh, uh, mean that uh, you have you can find uh, with the help of SEM that how the grains are arranged in the object uh, how the uh, lattice parameter look like in addition uh, to that you can find out the conductivity electrical uh, property strength etc uh, in the crystallographic uh, information so that's all we have in the introductions for uh, the SEM uh, hope you enjoy the lecture I uh, will stay to you in, uh, with the next lecture that will be lecture number two uh, and again that will be about scanning electron microscopy uh, the lecture uh, part two of the lecture uh, I mean that will be separate lecture but it will be part two of the scanning electron microscopy uh, but in that lecture we will have a discussion on different part of SEM so stay tuned with the next lecture held in bye bye